Hey guys, it's me Lunar. Welcome back to another Red Dead video. In this one, we're looking at how to get all 60 in-game weapons. 59 if you don't include the stone hatchet, which is only available for players who have completed the relevant GTA Online mission. The weapons are a mixture of missions found in the game world and craftable. Some of them are unique, meaning there's only one of them. Some of the unique ones are also missable, so don't forget to pick them up. You only need 48 out of 59 of the weapons to get 100% completion, but I'm going over all 60. If the video is helpful, a like is appreciated. So I'm going through these by chapter, just as they become available, except for the craftable ones, I'm going over all of them in chapter five, and that's when the final one unlocks for you to do, so you can just do them all at the same time. Let's start on chapter one. There are nine weapons available to collect in this chapter, all available during the main story missions, so they can't be missed. They are the first one, which is actually unarmed. It's not really a weapon. It does count as one of the weapons in your compendium. Number two is the Cattleman Revolver, the hunting knife, sawn off shotgun, bow and arrow, carbine repeater, dynamite, volcanic pistol, the varmint rifle, and the final one available in chapter one, the Springfield rifle. By the final mission of chapter one, you will have all of these. If not, then they are available for you to purchase at the gunsmith. You should have 10 weapons unlocked, including unarmed, which counts towards one of the 60 by the end of chapter one. In chapter two then, there are tons of weapons available in this chapter because you can pick up over 20 of them from the game world, as well as all the ones that are collected from missions. Let's start with the weapons that you get during the main missions. They include the tomahawk, double barrel shotgun, throwing knife, pump action shotgun, the rolling block rifle, double action revolver, the Schofield Revolver, and the Lancaster Repeater. Again, if you don't have them unlocked by the end of chapter two because you didn't get them during the mission, they will be available at the Gunsmith Unlock now for you to purchase, so you can get them that way. Either way, by the end of chapter two, all of those weapons will be available for you guys. So then guys, let's move on to some other things that you can get in chapter two, starting with the Missable Midnight Pistol, Flacco's Revolver, and the Granger Revolver. To get all three of these weapons, you get them from one mission in the game, which is called Noblest of Men and Women. Essentially, you have to find and kill all four gunslingers. Three of them, Emmett Granger, Flacco Hernandez, and Billy Midnight, have unique weapons on them to collect. I won't go through the entire mission, but all you need to know is when you duel all three during the mission, and you kill them, make sure to loot their guns as, like the rare shotgun from earlier, if you don't pick them up straight away and you leave the area, then they will disappear forever and there's no other way of getting them in the game. So when you're in chapter two, you can start doing this mission by talking to Theodore Levine in Valentine, he's in one of the saloons, and you can start this mission and you can just do it whenever you want to after that. But like I said, make sure to pick up the revolvers when you do it, or else you won't be able to get them later. Next then guys, some other stuff is also available in chapter two. For our next collectible, we're heading west to Big Valley. This is the location of two items, the Wide Blade Knife and the Miner's Headlamp. Both items are located inside of the mine. You need to interact with the dynamite to blow up the entrance, and the items are inside, next to, and on a body. Just south of here is the Stone Hatchet. However, it's only available if you've completed the relevant mission on GTA Online. Go to exactly where this is on the map, and you will find the Stone Hatchet if you've unlocked the relevant missions. From here, head up north to find the antler blade. This collectible knife is found inside of a dead bear just off the main path. Our next item is the double bit hatchet, a weapon located inside of a tree stump to the east of your last location. It's easy to see on the map, just northwest of Wallace Station, next to an old chimney in the ground, surrounded by fence, so you can't really miss it. Next up, the Hunter Hatchet. The hatchet is in a tree stump just behind a shack that sits on the river. It's really easy to spot if you go to this location. Be careful here, all of these unique hatchets, if you throw them, then you don't pick them up, then they can be lost. However, they will already have updated in your journal, working towards your 100% completion, but you still don't really want to lose any of your weapons. From here, we're heading east, and right on top of the map is the ancient tomahawk. It's found inside a wooden target that sits above the Calumet Ravine. Just follow the path around, and it's really easy to spot. South of your location, we're heading to Moonshine Pond. On a tree stump, like all the hatchets, the hewing hatchet just sits outside of the shack here. While you're in the area as well, you can also go into the shack by climbing up the tree trunk that's fallen down, and inside you will find a recipe for the homing tomahawk, 
although you can purchase it from fences later in the game if you want to. From here, head east again, a small shack before you enter Ansberg. The hatchet is in a tree stump at the back of the shack. Next then, two items together. An old hermit lives at this location here, and he will shoot you on sight. Kill him quickly, and then you may loot him for two things. The rare shotgun, a unique weapon that only spawns on this NPC. If you don't pick it up, or you die before you pick it up, or leave the area before you pick it up, it will disappear forever, and you won't be able to get it back any other way. So make sure you pick it up as soon as possible. Also in this location, inside of the hermit shack, is the second half of Otis Miller's treasure map inside of a drawer. Just west of here is the old viking tomb. You will find three items here, although one of them is not really that important. The first is the viking helmet located inside of the old tomb. Also inside of the tomb, if you destroy the skulls, you will find the viking comb. On the outside of the tomb, inside of a skull, is the viking hatchet. From here we're heading into Ansberg to find the rusted double bit hatchet. It's found in a tree stump just to the north of the town and it's just in front of one of the coal processing buildings. South of here at Fort Brennan, you will find the Civil War hat and knife. Head in the main entrance and the building on the left, you can head into the basement to find the knife on the table and the hat will be on the floor in the same room. There's also a chest in this room with a gold nugget I believe and there's also a horse tonic pamphlet in the fort as well if you're interested but like all pamphlets you can also buy them from any fence. Head south to the bottom of the map. Just outside of Saudani, where the Kamasa River meets the Lanashe River, there are some very small islands infested with alligators here. The Broken Pirate Sword, the best melee weapon in the game, is located here on a small boat. Next then, we get two different things from collecting dinosaur bones. The unique jawbone knife and the quartz chunk. You can start the mission at any time by talking to the stranger who's close to Valentine and you have to find 30 different dinosaur bones. After you collect one dinosaur bone, you will get the quartz chunk, and after you collect all 30, you will be rewarded with the job bone knife. The quartz chunk is needed to craft bear claw talisman, which decreases the speed at which health lowers, so it's very useful. And of course, the job bone knife is a unique knife found nowhere else. Again, all the locations are on this map, and there's tons of guides already for them, so I'm not going to go over them. But remember, to get your actual rewards, you have to go to the post office and send the dinosaur bones to the stranger in order to be rewarded. Let's then move on to chapter 3. There are two weapons that unlock as part of the main missions. They are the fire bottle and the bolt action rifle. But there's also another weapon as well, which is only available during chapter 3, and this is the rare rolling block rifle. The collectible sniper rifle not found anywhere else. During the chapter 3 mission Magicians for Sport, you are requested to find Trelawney. I'm not going to go over the entire mission as I don't want to give away any spoilers for that, but right at the end of the mission you will kill a sniper in a barn just as the mission ends. Make sure to pick up the rifle before leaving as it will disappear forever. So guys, that is the only time sensitive missable item in the game. It can only be done in chapter three. All the other ones can be done in pretty much any chapter. They're only missable if you forget to loot bodies for the item. But this one can't be done at any other time except for in chapter three. The item is also missable if you don't loot him and you won't get the rifle if you replay the mission either. So make sure that you do pick it up before moving on to chapter four. In chapter 4, during the main missions, you will unlock two weapons, the semi-automatic pistol and the semi-auto shotgun. Again, if you don't pick them up during the missions, they are available to purchase at any gunsmith. Next then, we have two items that become available during chapter 4. The first one is Algernon's revolver and the exotic hat. After you do the mission in chapter 4 called the Gilded Cage, a new stranger mission becomes available called Duchess and Other Animals, where you have to find collectible orchids. Once you start the quest, you will need to complete all five stages, finding over 190 orchids in total, so it's a really long one. And once you do that, like the dinosaur bones and the dreamcatchers, etc., you will be rewarded with Algernon's revolver, a unique weapon, and the exotic hat. After you complete the mission Last Night of Debauchery in Chapter 4, 
you can return to the Sheriff in Ansberg to get the location of Slyn Gram. The final part of the mission, Noblest of Men and Women, the quest where we got the Flacco's Revolver, Granger's Revolver and Midnight Pistol. After you duel Slim Grant, make sure to pick up the unique Callaway Revolver, it's not located anywhere else. During Chapter 5 there are 4 weapons that are available during the missions that will unlock. They are the Hatchet, Machete, Cleaver and the Mauser Pistol. The Mauser Pistol is again available at the Gunsmith. The Hatchet, Machete and Cleaver are available to purchase at the Fence. Throughout the first five missions though, you will also have unlocked some other recipes at the fence for craftable weapons, which we are going to go over right now, now that they are all unlocked. So while you're picking up the hatchet, machete and cleaver, make sure to pick up the recipe and make sure to read the recipe for the improved tomahawk, homing tomahawk, volatile fire bottle, volatile dynamite, improved throwing knife and the poison thrower knife. All six of these need to be crafted at the campfire first in order for them to show up in your compendium. Now the improved tomahawk and the improved thrower knife, you don't actually get those from the fence. They will be given to you as a recipe in chapter two, so you should already have them. Just make sure to read the recipe so you can unlock them for crafting. But the homing tomahawk, volatile fire bottle and dynamite and the poison thrower knife can be purchased from the fence and then you can craft them as well. During chapter six, there are three weapons that are available during the main missions. They are the Carcano sniper rifle, the Litchfield repeater and the repeating shotgun. So don't forget to pick those up. There's one final weapon that you can get in chapter 6, although you can get it earlier if you wish to. I only chose chapter 6 as it's in Saint Denis, but that is the Ornate Dagger. To get this dagger, you will need to first find some secret messages hidden around Saint Denis. After which you'll be given a map to a treasure location, you go to the location for a cutscene and you will receive the dagger. Super easy and simple if you know where to go. The first location we're going to is at the bottom of Saint Denis beside the railway tracks. An old building sits here and the writing is on the wall just through one of these gates. So you getting along okay? From here head north a little bit to the entrance to the Saint Denis market. The writing is on a wall just behind the small gate area to the right of the entrance. Next head to this group of buildings and head into the alleyways under the electrical work sign. On the left down the steps is the writing on the wall. It's a damn fine day. From here on the same block of buildings, head up the street to the Jade Dragon Chinese restaurant. Head in the alleyway to find the writing on the wall on the right hand side. Our final writing is on the street here, just below the saloon. It's just written on the wall, you can see it easily from the street. Now you should have all five pieces of text, they form a location as to where to get the weapon from. To get this we need to head to the spot on the map I have marked it here at midnight. 
Now there are some people having problems with this and it is missable so here is an easy solution. When waiting for midnight, don't wait close to the location of where you need to go, wait at the entrance to the church which is close by. After midnight, head to the location and an X should be on your map. If it's not there, simply run around the church again and the X will usually appear. Make sure you make a save just before midnight so that way you can reload your game. But I tested this out and it always seems to work for me, so this should work for you guys. Now when you fight the vampire, make sure to kill him. If you die, he won't appear again and the weapon is missable. Similarly, if you don't pick up the weapon when you're here, it will also disappear like a lot of the weapons in game like the rare shotgun, so make sure that you do pick it up. Also don't do anything other than kill him, like tie him up for example. I did this to see if he would be killed by sunlight, which he wasn't, but after you tie him up, he no longer uses the dagger to attack, he will simply attack you with his hands. And if you kill him, then the dagger won't appear. So yes, kill him as soon as you can in the alleyway and pick up the ornate dagger straight away. So at this point guys, you should now have 56 of the 60 weapons in game if you have followed this video. We just have four left to get, but they are post game. Now if you don't want any main story spoilers, then don't watch any further into the video because we're going on to the post game epilogue missions. So our final four weapons come in or after epilogues part one and two. The first two are John's knife and pistol, which you have on you during epilogue part one. So you can't miss these two and they will be added to your compendium at some point during the epilogue missions. Remember that you lose all of Arthur's stuff in the epilogue part one, but you will get it back in epilogue part two from Sadie. The final two items are the Otis Miller revolver. This is found in New Austin inside of a cave. The final weapon is Michael's revolver, return to Mount Hagen after the final mission American Venom to pick up his unique weapon. Guys, I hope this video is useful in helping you get all weapons in game. You should have 60, 59 if you didn't do the GTA missions to get the stone hatchet. You only need 48 of these for the 100% completion, but it's still nice to get all of them in game. Don't forget to subscribe for more Red Dead videos and updates to Red Dead Online when it releases. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.